everyone, welcome back. My name is Diana. This is my channel, Bookish Die, and today I'm talking about the 10 series I hope to finish in 2023. So I know this is going up in February, so we're already a month in, uh, which gives me a short timeline for this. But I was recently updating my reading spreadsheet and I had added a series tracker um, that someone else was using and I modified it for my own purposes. And I knew I had a problem with finishing series, but I didn't realize how dire <laughs> it was until, until I started going through um, my past reading and entering in series. So I decided that this year is going to be a year of finishing series. I am going to prioritize 10 series that I'm hoping to finish. These are all series that I had started at various points and had planned to continue and for various reasons I never did. I'm also prioritizing series where I do own the book so I can try and combine this with my plan of reducing my physical TBR. So I'm going to be going through um, a series from books that I have the fewest number of books to read before I finish to the most and Hopefully I can make some progress on this throughout the year. So let's get into it. First on this list is the Binti series by Nadia Korafor. So I have read the first two novellas. I've read Binti and I've read Binti Home, but I never got around to actually finishing Binti Night Masquerade. And I'm hoping because they're pretty short, I can actually do that this month. These are on my February pile of possibilities. So that would get rid of one book. I could mark this series down as finished um, and finally move on to some newer Nettie Okorafor, who is an author I really do like. And I do love these hardback cop copies. I got them on remainder from my local indies and I'm really glad I did just because they're so pretty. But yeah, these I'm hoping to get to this month. Um, I do need to reread because I think the last time I read um, both Binti and Binti Home was when I was in grad school. So that was at least four years ago, verging on like five to six years ago. So it's been a while. It's been a very long time. So I do need to reread these before I move on. But like I said, they're very short. I think it's really doable to have that happen this month. Next is the Chilling Effect series by Valerie Valdez. So this is one where I actually don't have the physical copies of. I do own the, the audiobooks, which is actually my preferred method of consuming these. So I really enjoy El Mariguera, who is the narrator. So I've read the first two books in the series, Chilling Effect and um, Prime Deception, and I just have Fault Tolerance, which is the final book in the series to finish. Um, Book two, I liked book two a lot more than book one, and so I'm hoping that that trend will continue and we'll get a really satisfactory ending for Captain Eva Inocente and the crew of La Sirena Negra, um, and we'll get more space hijinks and more smooching aliens. So I'm, I don't know when exactly I'm going to get to this. I'm hoping maybe in March, because I do have stuff going on in March where listening to an audiobook would be really helpful. So that is another one on my list. I will get something off my audio TBR. Um, so that's like my one little cheat just because I do want to finish it because I might be nominating this for best series at the Hugos um, for this year. Next on my list is The Books of Amba by Tasha Suri. So I read the first book, Empire of Sand, last year and really enjoyed it. It's a fantasy with romantic elements and it's following um, two sisters in this Indian inspired fantasy setting. And so book two follows the younger sister and she's now a widow. And I've heard some mixed things about book two. However, I know some people really loved it. So I'm willing to give it a chance. And I really like Tasha Suri's writing. I haven't read her Burning Kingdoms books yet. I'm hoping to finish these before I start the Jasmine Throne just to like get a series off my series list before committing to a new one. But yeah, I think again, this is really doable. It's a duology. I've already read one book. I read it within the last year, so I don't need to reread books before continuing. So hopefully I can knock this off relatively easily um, throughout the year. Another uh, series that I should pretty easily complete is the Mercenary Librarian series by Kit Roca. This is their trad pub debut from Tor. Um, they've 
written other books that have been self-published. They do have a, a how they've described it, a horny romance, ho horny fantasy romance coming out um, at some point, I think in 2024. But so this is a post-apocalyptic romance, just uh, sci-fi romance books. And we're following a group of uh, two different groups of characters who meet up in book one. So you have the Silver Devils. They're a former soldier. They're former soldiers who've defected and they're being hired to um, kidnap this woman, um, Nina, who's the, one of the, so the mercenary librarians and shit happens. It's very um, anti-capitalistic. It's found families, it's friendship. Yes, there's romance. Um, I would actually really recommend this if you vibe with Leverage, which is the best show, um, just because there's a lot of similar things about um, trying to destroy systems of oppression. And yeah, this, this series is a lot of fun. Book three came out last year. Um, it is kind of my breaking break glass in case of emergency book. Um, but there probably will be a time where I need to do that. And again, I only have one book left. It should be really easy to finish up. Next, moving on to series where I have more than one book to read um, before finishing and where I actually might want to reread book one. Uh, first, I have The Kingston Cycle by C.L. Polk. This is their debut fantasy trilogy published by Tor.com. So I had read Witchmark, I think the year it came out, I think it came out in 2018. And then um, Stormsong er, and Soulstar came out um, a few years later. And I have kept meaning to finish the series because I did really like Witchmark and I was very interested to explore the world that Polk had set up at the end of the first book. Um, but I never got around to reading it. And at this point, I do want to reread Witchmark before moving on because it has been a number of years and I've forgotten a lot about the characters and the world building. So this is one where um, I'm hoping to get through it to it throughout the year. And also, I appreciate that the spines are the bi flag colors. I think that's really neat. Um, but I did read a C.L. Polk book recently. I read, even though I knew the end, their uh, recently published novella, which was excellent. So that gives me extra incentive to go back and finish this series. Then a series I am a little ashamed that I haven't finished um, is the fifth, the Broken Earth trilogy by N.K. Jemison. Um, I love N.K. Jemison's writing. I have read pretty much everything else she's written. However, I read the fifth season in either 2015 or 2016 and I really liked it but it you know it's a very heavy book and then um in the summer of 2016 when the obelisk gate came out I was dealing with a lot of personal shit and then I started grad school and then I just never got around to finishing the series so again it's one where there's been so much time between now and when I initially read the book where I do want to reread it. Um, what I might end up having as my goal is, I don't know if February will be it, but maybe starting in March trying to read a book a month from this series. So that way I don't have that long gap between books. However, that way I can kind of prioritize finishing this uh, masterpiece of a series and um, being able to know what happens with Asun and her daughter. Then a more ambitious uh, series that I have two books left in is The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. I am not holding up every single book in the series because they are fucking chonkers and even books two, three and four is a lot. Um, so I read the first two books last year, The Grace of Kings, which I was met on, and The Veiled Throne, which, or sorry, the Wall of Storms, which I liked a lot more. And so I have the next two books in the series. I do want to read these, especially since I'm pretty positive that this is going to get a best series nom at the Hugo. I would actually, Hugo's, I'd actually be shocked if that didn't happen. Um, and I also have some challenges that are dealing with reading chunky books um, throughout the year. So I'm going to try and use that. Yes, I know the spines are different. Yes, I hate it. Um, it sucks. Uh, Saga cover designer, uh, meet me in the Denny's parking lot. We need to have some words. Um, 
But anyway, I'm hoping to finish the series and I'm hoping that it continues the positive momentum that I had through Wall of Storms. I thought that was a much stronger book. Ken Liu had a much better grasp of how to handle a large cast of characters and keep things interesting. And reading the cover copies for both of these books, it sounds like it's going to be a continuation of Wall of Storms, whereas Grace of Kings, real like especially now looking back on it, really feels like a 600 plus page prologue story um, or like his world building notes. So I don't know when this is going to happen, but um, because of some of the reading challenges I have, these are definitely going to happen at some point in 20, uh, 2003. Or, God, what fucking year is it? <laughs> 2023. Next, moving on to books where I have three books left to catch up on. First, we have the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. And yes, I know these do not match. Um, I got very excited when this came out and I saw it at Chapters and I bought it and I didn't realize they'd do additional sizes matching these later on. But I don't, anyway, I have three books left in this. I read Along With a Small and Angry Planet a number of years ago and then I never finished the series. I know they're standalone, so I don't necessarily feel the need to reread A Small Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet to a small angry planet, but I might. Um, but I definitely want to get around to finishing these books, especially because I'm always in the mood for comforting sci-fi. And uh, Illumicrate just announced a special edition and I really want it. And I would like to actually have read more than one book before I commit to spending that much money. Um, but yeah, I know people love these books. I know that I really enjoyed the first one. So hopefully this year will be the year I finish the Wayfarer series. So the next series is kind of cheating a little because book four isn't out yet. However, we are supposed to get it this year and I would really like to have caught up with the series before it happens. And that is the Lock Tomb series by Tamsin Muir. I have read Gideon the Ninth. I have not read the others. I feel really bad um, because I know my friends love them and I loved Gideon a lot. However, when Harrow came out, I was just like not in a good mental space for it. And then I never last year didn't get around to reading Harrow and Gideon before Nona came out. But now with Electa coming out, I do need to finish this series. Um, so I'm going to reread Gideon again just because I love that book. And um, it's been a few years. So I'm going to do that and then move on to Harrow and Nona. And then hopefully, I think in October, I will have Electo and I will read Electo and it will be great and I will be done with the series and I will cry. Um, yeah, these are my Illumicrate editions and they are very pretty. I love them a lot. Um, yeah. And then finally, a series where I have four books left to read. Um, is the Pandava Quintet by Roshni Chokchi. This is um, her middle grade series from Rick Riordan Presents. It was the first one published. I have read the first book, which is Our Shot in the End of Time, and I liked it a lot. And I, as you can see, have the rest of the series, which I have not read. So I might reread Our Shot in the End of Time beforehand, or reread it just because it has, again, it has been a while, but um, they're middle grade, so they tend to be pretty fast reads. And I'm really excited to finish this series and see what happens to Aru and her sisters and how they beat the sleeper. And please, for the love of God, do not bite that cord cat. Um, I don't want to deal with vet bills this month. Anyway, um, so yeah, this one, again, I'm probably going to try and space it out. I don't think I'm going to binge it just because... Um, that would be a lot of middle grade all at once. But yeah, I, I definitely think it's doable. They're pretty fast reads. And that way I can knock, down, knock out four books from my physical TBR, which would be great. So those are the 10 series I'm prioritizing for my 2023. Um, there may be some things that get added. I might not finish all of them. I'm going to try not to be too harsh on myself if that doesn't happen, but I think it's really doable, um, especially given the rate I'm reading and given that some of them, there's only like one, one or two books left and I don't need to go back and reread because I've read them really recently. So I think it's possible. I think this will be a great way for reading down my TBR and uh, reading some what's going to hopefully be some great books in the progress.
or in the process. Wow, I cannot speak today. Uh, Wednesday's really killing me. Anyway, uh, are there any series that you're prioritizing in 2023? Are there any books that I'm reading that you've finished and you have opinions on? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy what you see, please like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I will talk with you later. Bye.